Troy Dini, many messages coming in for you. Um, Troy, there's one. Colin, Watford fan, Rick, Ricksmansworth. I would love to see you come back to Watford and help Tom cleverly. We haven't been the same club since you left. Um, uh, there's another one. Troy, I'd love to see you back at the football club uh, doing your bit with Tom cleverly. So there's no shortage of support for you. The thing mm -hmm. is this, are you ready for management? Well... You dipped your toe in the water at Forest Green mm. and after 29 days there, Troy, um, we know what happened. Yep. You decided to speak out and Dale Vince decided to end it. This was Vince, the owner. I, um, I read some of what Troy said after that game. I, I didn't hear it, uh, but I read it and I, I, I thought it was wrong, uh, very wrong. He did later apologise on Sky, so I think he knows it was it was wrong. Uh, but it was definitely a factor that and uh, our, our results, not our performances so much, because our performances, uh, apart from that game, had been good. And, you know, he he, he also um, had a disciplinary yesterday with the FA. Uh, they they banned him for four games for, uh, I think it was um, abusive and violent language towards officials when he gets sent off against uh, when we played Swindon. Uh, and that was a new factor, you know, that uh, that, that kind of thing had happened. Um, so it really, it was uh, just a bundle of things. Uh, we haven't got a lot of time left, obviously, to save our season. And uh, and yesterday, I felt that uh, it was better to make the decision sooner than around later because I didn't think that this was going to work, given given those things. So it was Dale Vince. He didn't hang around. He didn't mince his words, Troy. Yeah. Um, you, you said you weren't maybe ready for it. Yeah. Do you think you can still convince owners out there, even like him, mm -hmm. that you'd be ready for it now? Well, you it's never really about convincing owners. An owner will have an opinion on what he wants to do and how he wants to do it, and it's whether you fit that mould. Um, yeah, the the idea of dropping, because remember, I was playing in the championship the year, literally last year. Mm. So the reason to drop to Forest Green was to, to play, but to also get a hand in the coaching, learn, do it the right way. So if I were going to go into media full-time, I'm not just going to come on and go, right, I'm going to get on the best show with you guys. I'm going to do this every single week, and I'm great. You've got to dip your toe in and learn the ropes and make your mistakes. Um, you know, he, he's, he's the owner. He makes a decision. I would, I would disagree with that. I think there's certain things, and Simon could allude to this as well, I think you you there's certain things you have to do to change culture. And it's a, it's a word I hate, but it's a word that gets used, word that gets used a lot. You have to, when you have a, a short ter term around it like I did, let's talk specifically to Forest Green. They lost 31 games the year before in League One. Not, not 10, 11, 31 games. Then under Dave Horseman, tried to change it at the start of play, all these different things, a lot of young players, and they continued to lose. So when we went in, it was on 46 losses in, the, in a 15-month spell, 17-month spell. So what should I do? Come in and be nice and try and change it slowly, gradually. Don't have that luxury. Now, granted, what I said out publicly wasn't, the way you should do it. You called out some players, did you? Yeah, yeah of course. But I already, I already spoke to those players first. So anyone who knows me, I, there's not something. I'm not going to say something to you here now, and then run behind your back and say something completely different. I will say everything to the players as well. It should have stayed in the in the dressing room. That is something I absolutely um, should not have done, and and learned from it. Absolutely. The the brilliant part for me is what this is the bit that no one really lo looks at now is the director of football's gone. The, the head of transfers has gone. So the, the people that are in the position to help you, are supposed to help me, guide me, especially the new role, they've all been sacked. Where are they now? Tell us? Yeah, right. so like, right. you know, the, the club's in a little bit of a disarray. And he's in, Dale would admit that he, they've made mistakes over the past 18 months and they're trying to fix it. And I wish Dale, um, Asif and the, and, the, and the team now all the best. I, I don't have any hard feelings. It was, mm. it was a wonderful experience. Yeah. And it's not made me go, oh, I wasn't good at that because I know what we did and, uh, and I know what we can uh, we can deliver. But obviously there's a lot more work to be done on my side. Take accountability first before you, you blame anyone else. Um, if you'd been Dale Vince, Simon, would you pull the plug and try? Yes. Because he spoke publicly? Well, I think there's a, it's a sort of Mark Twain expression. Is About it, a lack know? of effort. Well, you know, let people think you don't know anything. Don't open your mouth and prove it to them. Mm -hmm. The old expression, to let people think you're stupid, don't open your mouth and prove it, right? And I think that in that, in that moment, I think common sense departed yeah. and uh, a position of frustration and irritation and a belief system that somehow this will make it better um, and somehow I, I get something off my chest and, and things will be better as a result of it. But that should have been baked in and priced into the, the decision-making process that Dell had in the first place, which was I've got an inexper inexperienced manager 
working alongside me that's morphing from a player into a manager they didn't ask for this job it was offered to him as a result of circumstances so i've got to make sure that i'm pretty close to him and that any frustrations he's got he says them to me and anything he, anytime he wants to go off at the mouth and let it go and really have a go at something then we can do that between ourselves mm -hmm. yeah not in the media and Absolutely. that would mean that the, 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 the to some extent either either troy doesn't listen to what's being said to him or the owner didn't have that relationship knowing that he'd put in an inexperienced manager. So everyone's complicit in that situation. Mm -hmm. He's complicit for not engaging his brain rather than his mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and the owner's complicit by, by almost not understanding what he's got on his hands. Yeah, yeah. You've got, you've got somebody... I mean, what, what, look at Troy Deeney. Look at what he says. Mm -hmm. Look at what he does. People say that, that they'll have admiration for him criticising Arsenal. Other people will say, where are you? You yeah. bang average middle-tier Premier League footballer playing for Watford talking about Arsenal. That, that, I'm not saying that's yeah, what yeah, people could yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. with that in mind, so you know that. So when you're looking at... They wouldn't call me bang you, average, you, but I get what you're saying. You know, <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. But, but, but I'm joking. Take, take aside that comment. Yeah, right? no, and look at it and go, yeah. this is, I'm Del Vince, right? Yeah. And I wouldn't be Del Vince because I wouldn't. I would own a proper football club. I don't think Forest Green Rovers is a proper football club. That's I think not fair. Palace was a forward-looking football club. I wanted them in the Premier League. They were in the Premier League. They were a top championship yeah, side. So different aspirations. So when you're asking me to say what I'd do with Dale, would I, with Troy, would I have employed... Would I have given my first opportunity to a manager, uh, to Troy at Palace? No, because mm. of the scale of the club. Right? Yeah. So now you're asking me to inhabit a different position. So that's why I qualify the point between Forest Green Rovers and Palace. But the other point of it is, is that I would know with Troy, I'm taking a punt here. Mm -hmm. Someone is not experienced. They don't really understand the landscape of what management involves. Can they manage up? That's going to be one of their problems. Mm -hmm. Are they going to say things that ultimately that they've been able to say as a player and possibly might think as a player that they can't now say as mm -hmm. a manager? Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to pull this fellow as close as I possibly can to me and I'm going to go, right, you use me. When you, when you, mm -hmm. when you want to call these whatever they are out, right, you tell me about it. And we'll deal with it and we'll fix it. Right. That's mm -hmm. what I would have done. And you get that now, Troy. Absolutely. Do you think it'll affect you further down the line, Troy, with a prospective owner who's saying, Troy Dini, yeah, fancy him? Yeah, no, of course it will. Of course it will. But it's like will anything. It? Yeah, of course it will. You have to you have to earn respect. Respect is never the thing is you can do a thousand things right. One one bad thing always stays in everyone's memory. So yeah. it's about re realigning. But like I said, and I will be adamant with this, I didn't go into Forest Green saying, I want the job. That was never it was a case of going in and learning, doing my badges doing all of that fun stuff right. and understanding from what it takes at the at the lower level. I was in League Two when I was 19. I haven't done that again since. So I don't know what that landscape looks like. I don't know what the players think. So right, let's get in there. I know what Premier League players think because I was doing that two years ago. I know what Championship players think because I was doing that last year. I know how those clubs work. But where is my start point realistically? Probably got to be in and around those areas. So get in, learn, get your hands dirty and figure it out. And it just didn't work out. Understood. If, if the, a manager had called you out publicly, yeah, when you were a player, Dini. Well, the, obvi the Dini. obvious thing is, and I think you've said this before. Would you have taken so, it? You, I'll never put you in that position that you could, because what I'm talking about is effort. It's not about your technical ability. It's not about how good you played the position. Effort, desire to be on time for work. You've but, never not lifted a leg. You've always given one hundred percent. In every whatever, time. whatever, every time. Of course, it is. It's the best job in the world. It's the best job in the world. Even for this, was I on time for this? You were. Well, it was early. You were early. Did we have chats yesterday about and it? And I this get year? it, mate. I get it. I was at that game that you played in. Yeah. Uh, for Forest Green against Colchester, mm -hmm. and you you ran it. Yeah. And you were brilliant. You won five nil, I think. Yep. Um, and I I could see there were moments of frustrating with you, frustration. Within of course. you, even though you were coasting through it, mm -hmm. that they weren't thinking as quickly as you. No, but it's it's not it's not even about thinking as quickly. It, it's about, and I'd be interested to get both your points on this. It's about understanding where they are in life, right? So let's let's t keep it to a purely. We all play football because we love it and we happen to be good at it. But the the fundamental is about finances, right? So you want to work to earn a living to to live the rest of your life as comfortably as possible. The money is not there in League Two so that you can retire at the end of it. But you have the ability to further yourself by putting more into it. Yes, yeah. Because the difference between League Two and League One is not great in terms of players. They're, they're, they're close. There's a massive step up to the top end of League One and to the lower end of the Championship, which you may reach, you may not reach. But then there's an even bigger reach in the Championship. And then you go into the astronomical reach, which these players are probably not going to reach at this moment in time, is the Premier League. The ones who can afford to retire, living really comfortably, are in the Premier League. 
Everybody else championship has to think, right, I've got to maximise this potential. I have to maximise playing as long as possible. Yeah. If you're 27, 28 years old playing in League Two, it's because you're not applying yourself the right way. It's it's also... it's mean? that's. I understand some I of that. I get it. I understand some of that, but I would suggest that the more simplistic part of it is about leadership and communication. Mm-hmm. And whatever, you, whatever level someone's at, it's about exacting the very best version of them. Yeah. And that's about a form of leadership and it's about communicating with them. And if communicating with them is understanding their circumstances... Football management involves prostitution. I don't mean using prostitution. Yeah. I mean having to prostitute yourself and say to things to the players that you That's know so not to be true mm-hmm. to get the best from them. Having okay. to not pull them up in certain circumstances because the modern day player can't cope with it. It can only cope mm-hmm. with praise, not criticism. The days of putting a player on point, the days of making them do certain things have gone. Yeah. So there is an element of having to prostitute oneself to get certain outcomes. But the, the real, uh, you know, for me as him as a manager, I've spent time with him. And if I was asked the question about Troy Deeney in terms of do I think he has the capability of being a manager? Yes, I do. Not because I like him, but because I think he has the propensity to think his way through challenges in life and overcome them. Mm. And too many people judge and a failure and then say, once you've had a failure, that's the categorization yeah, you have forever. Mm-hmm. Go and live in America and failure is part of someone's success. Yeah. If you haven't failed, you ain't a success in the end, mm-hmm. in the longer game. So I think that the way that he thinks about things and the way that he applies himself and the opportunity he'll create for himself... I, I think he'll get another go, but also the media and the way he represents himself and what he says over the ensuing weeks and months... Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll also play a part in that. Absolutely. You like Troy? I do. Do you like me? Not particularly. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.